All right. Uh, good day to you all, wherever you're joining us from. Uh, it's a beautiful and great morning here in the capital city of Nigeria, Abuja. Uh, and you are all welcome to our monthly webinar for the month of August. My name is Fidelis Obani, and I'm the anchor for today's webinar. Uh, this webinar is organized by the Abuja R User Group, uh, a local community of R users, R enthusiasts, and professionals in the capital city of Nigeria, Abuja. And uh, our topic for today is data manipulation the tidy way. Data manipulation the tidy way. So quickly running through our agenda. So after the welcome, welcoming of the participants, okay, I would like to introduce our, our guest speaker. Our guest, oh, she's not a guest actually, but she's our speaker, she's, she's, she's our founder. So our speaker for today is Bilikiswa Alakunji. Bilikiswa Alakunji is a data scientist, our shining developer at Business Data Laboratory. As a passionate R programming enthusiast and user, she founded the Abuja R Users Group and R Ladies Abuja, which she co-organizes with fellow R enthusiasts from various professions and academics. She's also a certified R Studio instructor. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, join me in welcoming Billy Kisu or Latunji for our lecture. Thank you. Thank you, Fidelis. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate that. So thank you, everybody, for joining us this morning. So today we're going to be looking at data manipulation, the tidy way. So we're going to be looking at some of the packages for data manipulation. So I'm going to be sharing my screen now. So please kindly confirm if you can see my screen. Yes, we can. I can. I can. Okay. 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 So thank you everybody for joining us today. So, okay. Thank you. So uh, we're going to be looking at data manipulation, the tidy way. So from the methodology of from the foundation is that we need to work with tidy data for us to be able to do whatever analysis we might be wanting to start. Our data should be in a tidy way. That's basically it. So I'm just going to go through briefly from what Fidelis has said about me. I'm Billy Kisu Olatunji. So a data scientist, shiny developer and certified our studio instructor. So I work with them, Business Data Laboratory here in Abuja. So you can join me on Twitter at my handle, QBWOA, then also on LinkedIn. So, and these are my favorite aspects. I've been a, a member and the founder of um, Abuja R User Group and the R Ladies Abuja. So without taking much of our time, we are also Abuja R User Groups. So we're fanatics about R and we are all passionate. We use it in our daily work and we are so, so, so passionate. And that's why we're kind of creating a community that really helps to build and also grow the community based on R, the usage of R. So, so, so the first thing we're going to be looking at, the, one of the packages that we'll be looking at first is the tidy R. So from the understanding, the standard structure of tidy data means that tidy data sets are all alike. So that means they're having distinct columns, that variables, they're also having distinct rows that represent all an observation. So, but when the data is messy, that, that we can really make sense of it, then we'll have to look at it as the data is 
every every messy data set is messy in its own way from what Adi Adi Wickham said. So we're looking at columns that their values, they're supposed to be values and roles are now being represented as variables, things that were information that are supposed to actually be the column or the variable itself, they are now being as represented as observations. So, and also our columns are now values that are supposed to be on the observation level rather than being in the column. So, and just from what we have from Alison's um, mm -hmm. illustration, my columns are values and my rows are variables. And I have variables in the columns and in rows, those are messy. So, and we also have examples like multiple variables in a single column. So we might want to look at kind of cleaning it up to be data that has columns as variables and rows as observations. Okay. Okay. So tidy data is data where every column is a variable. So, and every row is an observation and every single cell in a sing is a single value. So now we have happy data set like the like data frame or a table. So they are happy from the illustration here. So we're going to be looking at that. And the package we're going to be looking at here is that for us to have our columns as variables and our rows as observations, we need to use the tidy R package to help us kind of restructure our data. So sometimes you might have wide or too long data set that needs to kind of be restructured to either be wider or longer. So this is where tidy R package comes in. And tidy R package is a package that is also a sub package in tidyverse. Tidyverse is like a mega package that um, really depicts the philosophy of tidy data. So the tidy R is the package that helps us with the structure, either make it wide, like we have more columns or more variables, or we are looking at longer, there's more observations than variables. So we can install the package just like we always do with the other packages that, okay, we install those packages or we actually go ahead and restore only the tidy R package. But basically we would want to use the tidyverse because it encompasses other packages that will help us in working with our data, bringing it in, cleaning manipulation and other manipulations. So, but either way, you'll still be able to use the tidy R package. So you can install directly from CRAN or through the DevTools, using the DevTools package this way. So, and then after installation, we load our package. So, when we're, when we're referring to pivoting, pivoting helps us to convert from the explanation I've given earlier, converts between long and wide forms of our data set. So we can either use pivot longer or pivot wider as the function within the tidy R package. So, and this is actually the format for us to, and other functional arguments in our functions that helps us to use the function properly. So now we're going to, I'll take you into our studio where we'll go through an example of how the data actually is. So if you have any question, you can pop it up into the chat, then Fidelis will be able to take us. Okay, so now I'm in our studio. So I can load my tidyverse library because I'm going to be bringing in some data later. So 
or I go ahead to just load the tidy art package, but either way, you're still good. So I'm going to be using examples from the tidy art package itself. We have a data set that is, um, we call the religion income, religion and income data. So I'm going to load then this data, bring it up. From what we have here, if we look at, let's examine what we have in the data set. If we look critically well at the data, you can see that the column names or variable names here are actually looking like values. So it shouldn't be representing a column name or a variable name. A variable or a column is depicting a certain value, it's describing values that you can have in your observations that's on rows. So for us to do any analysis, clean the data or put it in the right structure, that is the best, the, the way to start. So without your data being the right structure or being in the right format, your analysis will be faulty. So you might end up with wrong or explanatory data analysis, or maybe you're trying to create models. This would be a big problem. So we need to look at the data. Now the data here doesn't look clean. It's kind of dirty. It's not in the right structure. And we have other columns, like the religion column. It's okay. What we have there is okay. But the other then, variables here are actually not helping. It's not good. So we can look at the names for all this. The variables we have in here are this. So we have the religion column, then we have other columns that are depicting the range of salary or income by each of the observations that we're having here. So that shouldn't be, we should have something like an income column that will help us have values distinct for each of the observations. So this, we are going to look at how we're going to convert that. And we're also going to get data from cargo that we can use as an exact real life example. So for this now, the data here, let me bring it up for the Excel users. It's coming from the Excel background. Let's view it in a table format. So we're looking at the data in a table in a tabular format now. So what we want to do is that this is actually wide. We want to take all these values that are representing the column names or variable names. We want to take them into a single column that will represent the income itself, the range of income for this group of religious um, individuals. So that is what we want to do right now. So I'm going to go back to my script. So here, from the function that we're having, we're going to be using the pivot longer because we want to collapse it to have fewer variables compared to the to so many variables that we have that are actually not passing the message. So we want to take out all the variables except the religion column. So I'm taking you back to the tabular format now. So we want to take all this as range of income for each of these um, religious group. We want to take them as a single column, but we're not going to be using the religious column because it to, will to give us something wrong at the end of the day. So we're going to take it out. That's why we're using the exclamation mark to exempt inclusion of this, um, they call the variable religion. So that's why this is here now. The data we're actually working on is this, and we're using the pipe, um, the pipe, um, um, what would I say? So the pipe, we're going to be using the pipe as a means of passing the data into the function itself. So from that, we're going to exempt this. We're exempting this column. Okay. So we're exempting the column. And now we're going to now pivot all the other columns to have only two columns now. So the columns that we're going to have 
after the religion is going to be income and the count. The count is going to count the number of observations that correspond to the income range that we're having. So now the pipe operator, if we don't want to use the pipe operator now, so thanks. So the pipe operator, we can either use it as a single statement. I can put that there from what we're having. So I will take this out. So you can so we're taking out this. So this can also be used instead of using the pipe. So if you are not familiar with the pipe, we are trying to take a, take along, carry along our newbies that are within our group. So, but either way, if you run this, we're going to have only three columns now. So I'm going to expand. So we have only three columns here. So the almost how many, um, let me go back. So we have how many columns before? We have collapsed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So we've collapsed 10 columns into just two columns now. So it makes sense when we are looking at values like 30, 30 to 40K dollars maybe per year for somebody who is agnostic and we're knowing the number of people that are actually belonging to that range. That makes sense. And we are all having all this value under a column depicted as income column. So I would like to view this also in a tabular format. So we just need to use the function view. So this takes us to, so we're carrying along the Excel users that are coming into her. So you'll be able to see it here. So we now have more than, we're having more than what we had before. That's 18 rows, that's observations. We're now having 180 rows or observations. So it's now longer. So that from the function name, pivot longer makes your data set to be longer, while pivot wider makes it a little bit more wider than what you have. You have more variables there. So that is what we've been able to achieve here. So I think this makes sense. You can do your analysis now. You can be able to kind of, how many people belong to this? Either you want to visualize it or you want to do some summary statistics, then you'll be able to do this. So we're getting our data in a long, is in a cleaner and tidier format now. So um, there are other examples. We want to take another example that is actually a little bit more complex. So if we're looking at data in the sense that, okay, we have, I'm going to bring this up as well. Okay, so the data we're having here is this. If we look at the variable names, that's where we should start. Does it make sense to be called a variable or is it supposed to be a value? So if you look at the columns, starting with WUK, they are representing weak numbers. And the values here are showing values corresponding to each week for each of the artists and the track and the data as well. So what we want to do now is that we want to be specific. We don't want to take all the columns now. We want to be specific that, okay, the columns we want to pivot into to have as um, values instead of being variables now are starting with WUK. They are all starting with WUK. So if we look at all of them, they are actually starting with W. So we have up to 47, um, more than more than 47, so almost 70 something columns for weeks now. So we want to collapse them into something meaningful that will represent better the variable names. So now what we want to do is this. We're still going to go into functions that helps the 
helps us to understand the um, manipulation of data better with Dplyr. But here are help helper functions that you can use in your arguments. So for this function, pivot longer, we have some helper functions that you can use in it as well. So starting here, we want to look at the columns. Which columns are we particular about? So we want to be specific that any column that starts with the letters WK should be included. So every other column that doesn't belong in that um, category is not going to be included here. So now which name, there's another argument. Okay, we actually did not use those or oh, the other arguments here in the first example. So the next, this one is more, a little bit complex and you need to just follow along with me. So the, we're going to look at, okay, we want to give it a new name. So for the values that we are bringing from the variable names, we want them to be under the column name week. Okay, so, and the names prefix here is going to be WK. So we're still going to have our value there depicted that way. So then the numbers that are actually values on the rows before we did the pivoting, they are now going to be here on the rank. So the rank for each of the artists on that particular day, that week, they are going to be under the column rank. So that's where the value is going to. For the first example that we did, the values went into the count column. So I'm going to run this. Uh, let me add at the end of the line so that we'll view it in a tabular format. So we'll appreciate it more. So the billboard is already here. We saw it's in the raw data. Now we want to do the pivoting now and we also view it. So now instead of having the week, 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 that we're having before, we don't have it here anymore. So we have a column, a column with the name week, and we also have the rank column. So for all the data that were under the WK1 and so on columns, we've collapsed them and they are now longer under the week column and the values they were having before is now placed under the rank column. So if we go back to the code, the WK that's actually the prefix of the values that were on the, um, the that was on the variable names or the column names, they were taken out as prefix. That's where this comes in. And we have only the numerical value there. That's the one with one with two. So this makes sense now. And we can actually analyze this. So instead of having something wide that doesn't make sense, it's not tidy, it's messy then we'll collapse it to have something that really speaks to us. So for week one now, two packs, Baby Don't Cry, the album now, the track for the week one on this date has a rank of 87. This makes sense now. Instead of searching through long number of um, variables or columns there, we've been able to see something meaningful instantly. And this really passes more message than just having something wider. So please kindly put the questions you might be having in the chat box that we'll be able to attend to it as soon as possible. So another um, argument that is there is that we're dropping any. So wherever there wasn't any value before, we're dropping it out. So we drop the values there. So that was why this one is true. So there are so many examples also that we can look at. Another example here is the ASCOM, ASCOM B, forgive me for that, data set. So the helper function here that is different from what we've done before is actually the everything. That means we are actually looking at pivoting all the variables there. So let me bring this up, it's not so wide. So this is the data set there. So we have the X1, X2, and so on. So we want to pivot everything, all the variables here. That's what we're doing. So that's why it's 
referring to all the variables as everything. That function, the upper function here takes up all the variables. So then the names now are going to be based on the values and they are going to be set. So this is actually um, kind of a default for now. That's just what I'll say that, okay, if you're looking at every value and we're going to set the values, we're going to be using this combined, combined function with this value here, dot value. Remember the dot value is there, then the set. This is going to be the value and actually this, the column. So the dot dot here, the name pattern here is looking at the way the data is actually presented. So let me bring this back up. So what we're having here is the dot dot represent the first character, then the second one, the number. So this is going to affect the value and what is being set here. So let me run this so that you make sense of what we have. So from what we have on the screen, okay, you can see that for X1, X2, X3, Y1, and so on, we only have X now and Y, okay? The numbers that are, the second value that is there is now being placed under the set, okay? The first character now has the values that were actually under them for each of the observations. So that is exactly what is being done for the name two and the names pattern. So this is actually about regex, that's regular expressions that we need to, it's out of scope of this class today or the webinar today. So, but if you have any question, maybe we can expand more on that, then you can ask that question. So I wouldn't want to go too much into this, but I want to bring in some data from Kaggle. So the data is actually about the Olympic uh, medals per country. So I'm going to bring this in using the read underscore CSV. This is a, a function within one of the tidyverse package, the sub packages there, that, that's reader. So this helps us to bring in our data from CSV, CSV file. So I'm going to save that file as a data object with the name Olympic um, underscore data one. So I'm going to run this line of code. So we have this here now in our environment, then I'm going to click on that. So from what you can see on my screen, this is also a data data, it's too wide. And the data, the values on, for each of these columns should actually be values, not a variable name. So the variable names now, we need to convert them and collapse the wide or so many variables that we're having, we want to collapse them into a smaller number of variables that actually uh, passes message more than this. So I'm going back to my code. So what I want to do now is that for the data, uh, that's the table that we're having or the data frame as you want to call it. We're going to use, bring that as the data for what we're using now, what we're going to use for the pivoting. So let me take you back. We're going to deal with this. So just bear with me if you don't understand this, we'll deal with that in deep layer. So I want to take columns that starts with total and ends with total, I want to take them out. So that is exactly what I'm doing on this line 77. So I want to take all columns. If I take you back to the to the data set that is table, the table or the data frame, I want to take out columns that already have the sum total of all the medals collected during summer and winter for either gold, silver, and bronze. So I'm going to take those ones out because that's with like duplicating um, values or maybe information on the table. So I want to take that out. So this summer underscore total, that's total 
capital is ending this variable name. I want to take it out. Don't involve it and take it out of the data set completely. Another one is the winter underscore total and also every other column that starts with total, we want to take them out. So that's what I've done here. So the total participation is also part of the ones that we don't want. So that is what I did here. So if I run this, let me let me show you. I want to show you what the result would be before we actually do the pivoting. If you look at this screen now, we don't have much variables here, and the columns that starts with and ends with total are all out. So moving on. So the next thing is now I need to call in my function. That's the pivot longer. So the pivot longer is also going to help me to exempt some columns. So columns, countries, and IOC code, they're going to be taken out of the ones that are going to be affected by, by the pivoting tasks that we want to do. So I'm taking that out by assigning the values to these argument calls. So that those ones are going to be out. Then we're going to be looking at the data, the results of the pivoting, the columns that are going to be returned is going to be season and the value. So then the names here will tell in the function that, okay, the names on the variable names, they are actually separated by underscore. So the, the, the season and the value are going to have their values for the first, the, on the left side of the underscore, the value there is going to be saved on the season. So while the subsequent one after the underscore is going to go under the value. So I'm going to run this. Okay, let me just save it as the Olympic data one underscore um long so i'm going to click on this so we we'll look at what we have here so for the season that we have you can see this is the season underscore gold now the summer is under season while gold and silver bronze they are now on the um sorry they are having their own column. That's where the values went into. So this is the value. So the columns that comes under the value argument or the value um, argument here is actually three columns. So those are the ones that are represented by gold, silver, and bronze. So you can change the name, the two, maybe number of gold, number of gold, silver, number of bronze. So as you wish, but this is still okay. It still makes sense compared to what we have combined before, summer underscore gold, underscore silver and so on. So this now makes sense more than what we had before. So, and the values, the number of gold for each of the countries during the season, summer or winter, they are all depicted we have the values under each of the columns now. So if you have any question, please let me know. Okay. So this, so this solves our problem now. So yeah, I've done the pivoting, I've collapsed. You might want to, we want, we want to now look at the pivot wider. So I'll look at the examples that falls on the the pivot wider. So the, there are some data set that comes also with the tidy package. So that's what I'm going to use first before we go back to our long data and trying to bring it back to a wider um, data set again. So we can move in between the two. So this fish underscore encounters, I want to view that as the tabular data. So we, what we have here is this. Now we don't have a wide data set. 
why they said in the sense that, okay, this makes sense, but there are still some things within the observations that really need to go the other way. We want to change them from being just observations to what? We want them to be variables now. So in, we have to look at what we have here. There are some values here under the station. We have some, you got the fish, you, you need to look at the fish first, the fish column, because some values are being repeated here. From row, there's observation from one to 11. They are repeated and they are having values, different values here, okay? So if we go back to our code now, what we want to do is that make the, we are going to make the data set white and we're going to take names from the station column, that's the station variable. We're going to take those names and we're going to use them as variable names. So let me run this, then you will be able to appreciate better. Then we'll come back to the code. Oh, so let me, let's view it as a data, data set. Okay. So you will look at my screen now. What we have here is that we've taken out values under the station column. We're now making them to be what? Variable names or column names. So the data could have come to us in this format, but we can also take it back by using the pivot longer to take it back to what we had earlier. So this is exactly what you'll be looking at if we're looking at making the data wider, maybe your analysis might demand you to do that. So you want to do this as well. So let me take that and I'll comment this out. So um, one, one more thing that you have to look at is that when we had the data, because we were making it wide, there are some values that correspond to each of these um, observations while they were on the rows that doesn't have, they don't have values. They don't have values corresponding to them. So now we have NEs. Wherever we can't get value, we get NEs. So in order to take out the NAs, that's data that is not available, that the value is not available there. So we need to use another argument and we set it to this. So values, fill it up. Wherever you don't have values, fill it up with zeros. So that is what we did here. And if we look at, I'm going to add this. So where there are no values, we are replacing them with zeros so that we don't get into the problem of having any's. So that is that. So I'm going to go back to the examples from the cargo data set that we're working on before so that we'll be able to use the time ball and we'll take some questions. So now what I want to do now is that, yeah, we've made it a little bit longer, a data set that is long, we've made it uh, wide, we've made it long. So now I want to go the other way. So I want to use the pivot wider function to bring it back, to try to bring it back. Sometimes you might not get everything the right, the same way, but you get something close that you can now do a little bit of manipulation on it. So now what I'm doing here is that I'm going to allow you to view Okay, let me take this. Okay, so this is what we have. We have the countries IOC code and so on. So we want to take it back into a wider data set that it was before. So that is what I try to do here. So using the pivot wider, 
I said the name should come from season, okay? So the names are coming from season. Then also I want the separator to be there again. So and the values are going to come from gold, from columns, gold, silver, and bronze. We're going to use all this as a source of our value. So I'm going to, let me take this out so that I don't get an error. So, and this is actually what we'll have. Okay, let me allow you to view it in a tabular format. So we're now having something close to what we had before. So that is gold underscore summer, gold underscore winter, and so on and so forth. And where there are no values, we have any's now. So you can do just what we did before. Like we can add this um, to solve that problem, we'll say, that's zero. So now this would take out, So it's going to take out the NAs for us. So now we don't have the NAs anymore. Okay. So moving on. So the, okay, yeah, this is exactly what I did. So that's that's that. So we can have that. So the code for the class for the webinar is going to be shared after the webinar. So. So the same thing here, we'll fill up um, the data set. So I want to look at another data from Cargo. It's also based on the, it's based on the Olympic results. So we can take a look at this. So this is the data, okay. Yeah, like gold summer with a, with a single trick, yes, yes. Okay, yeah, I think we will have to switch. So this is where we can, for, for the gold, values so for the so what the question now says that can we give name like gold underscore summer with a single tick with a single trick sorry i okay I, actually i didn't get that well the question with a single trick out you can go ahead and speak Yanish. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, flip the Yeah, I think we're going to have an example like that now. So what I what I want to, to do is okay for the so what we can do is this. So instead of um this one, so let me use this one. Okay, is this what you want? So instead of gold summer, we now have. Did I did I answer your question? Inish, I hope I pronounce your. Okay, good. Um. So. Okay, yes, now the flip name, uh -huh. okay, I think. Okay, that was actually what was there before. So if, if I take out this argument, 
Okay, so I put this work and select this. Okay. Okay, the argument here is this names underscore glue. So if I do this, okay, so we want to switch, switch back. Okay, you get it now. Okay, that's the argument. So you can use that argument to change the arrangement, whichever way you want to go. So what we had here is silver, summer. So now we want to have summer, silver. So if I do this, no. So, um, okay, sorry, where were we coming from? So let me let me let me go back. Okay. So um, what we have now is what winter gold. That is season and gold. So I want to take this out. Season and the metal type. Control X. So. So now we have metal and the season. Now we want to flip it the other way to have season that the summer. So do you get it now? So for you to flip it, you can use the argument name on that for So I hope that is clear. Thanks. Okay, good. So whichever one you want, you can always change that aspect. Okay, sorry. I yeah, it's the weekend. Can you kindly mute yourself? <laughs> okay, it's weekend there. So we have the kids around. It's not easy there. Okay, hello. So, moving on, okay. So, so thank you for the question. So I think we can go on. So we want to look at the second um, example I want to use here is the 2020 Olympics. So I want to view that. So this is what we have here. So you can see there's some, the, the, the particular column that we're going to focus on is the position 2020 and position 2019. So we're looking at medals from 2019 and 2020 to 2020. So we want to kind of do something about this. We want to have a column for the year and we want to know the position actually for that year instead of having it on as an observation now it might work this way but we want to kind of have a single column that represents the year and the position so if we're looking at visualization this case applies we want something specific about the year and we want something specific about the position so let me take you back to demo the code so we're going to look at the columns the columns here is the that's one two three and four the fourth and the fifth column so i'll go back to the code now so i'm specifying that focus on the columns four and five so the names here we're taking the names for a very variable year Okay, there's going to be a column for the year. So the value is going to be on that. That's the 2020, 2019 and the 2020 are going to be under this column. Then the values, the values for the column, the column that was actually positioned 2020, 2019 or 2020, the values under that column, we're going to put it under a new column with the name position. 
So, and the prefix here for the name, where we're getting this name from is position with a space. Don't forget the space, because if we don't take the space into consideration, it's going to be attached to the, to the, um, the new column that we're looking at. So it's better take out everything that you don't want as the prefix, then we'll be able to have something clean there. So, um, so I'll run this. Okay. So, um, okay. So I'm a visual person. So let's just create the data frame first, then we'll view it in Excel so that we'll appreciate. Um, okay, so volume big. That's data two. You can also click the name here because I'm not seeing. Okay, yeah. So I've I have it here. You can click on this name and it will show it to us, or we use the view function. And because I'm in my script, I prefer to just stay within. So this is what we have now. But right now we want to change it back to something that okay, we can work with. That's the longer version of it. And that is where we have Olympic underscore data to underscore long. So if you look at my screen, by default, the new columns will be at the end of your data set. So this is where we have. So you can see the column now, year is now a single column. Then we have the position as a single column as well. Okay. So the values now, before we had line one and two, that has observations one and two as a single observation. So we had position for 2020, position 2020 as 122, then position 2019 as 121, side by side. But right now we're having this as a single column with the year on its side now. So we don't have to be shopping around for which variable has the values for. 2019 and 2020. So we have that now. So, so any question? Yeah. Okay, so we're going back to making it wider. So I want to, I think that's, that helps. Okay, is it necessary to add the previous? Yeah, because we're looking at the name, we're trying to extract the new name from the old name. Okay, so if you're not going to use that, the name prefix will use the from the examples we have in before. So you can either use the name view or you come to the first example that we used. Okay. So just allow this to be there, then we would, the names will be extracted, it will be given the default name. Then you can change your names later. But I don't want to go into complex stuff because of our new comment. I hope I've answered that. So, but we're trying to extract the name from the columns that we have here before we go for a new name. So we'll get to see how you can also manipulate new, give new names, but I don't, there are ways that you can do it here, but we don't want to go too complex. So let me just stay here for now. So for the second one, we want to separate the names. We're taking the, the Okay, good, thank you. So we're taking names, since we already have um, the Olympic long, long, okay. For the long one that we're trying to take and make it wide, what we want to do, we want to create something like um, with an underscore, the new name should be with underscore. So if I run this, and we view. 
So the new name now is going to be position underscore 20, or you replace the underscore this. So we'll have something close to what we had before. Okay, so, but we're having an extra column here. So this one, you have to take it out. So I don't know how to go by that, but this is actually the result that I got when I tried to do that. So we'll take out the last two, but we have back what we had in the beginning. So this is our new data two wide. The former one, the one we got directly. Okay, it's the same thing. So 122, 121, 122, 121. So we've tried our best to get back to, get the old data back. So it's just an opposite, where's an opposite? Pivot longer, you can either make it longer or you make it wider. So I just want to use that example so that we'll know we can always go back and forth between the two. Okay, so, so you can deal with the last two by taking it out, this, and then you have your data back just the way it should be. So, I'm going to stop about this. Stop on these examples for the structures, so that I can use the time well. Then I'll go into data manipulation using Dplyr. So I'm going back to my slides. So. Okay, so thank you so much for, so there are other functions that comes with the tidy R package, but because of time, I want to go to Dplyr. So you can explore more, there are cheat sheets that you can go through for each of the packages that we have. So this helps you to build your skills more. I'm not a, and I won't say I'm a genius in tidy R, but we can learn more by exploring other functions and different case studies on the use of each of the functions that comes with the package. Excuse me. So, so my apologies there. Okay. So, so this is the illustration from Alison. So, thank you so much for using the picture there. And it's really depicted. Okay. When we're looking at data that looks monstrous, we can really take. Sorry, sincere apologies there. Okay, so we're going wrangling now. So we might look at some subsets of columns using their names and types. So here we we'll, we we'll don't want to look at the bigger data sets. We might want to select some specific columns in our data set. And this is where you do manipulations. When you are able to take out what you want from your large data set, then you have the power to tame your data itself. So we have different selection features that we can use with the select function. Okay, so the select function help us to take out what we need that will subset our data using the variable names. So we have some select selection features that we can use with that. 
So then we also have the upper functions that we came across while we're doing using tidy R. So we have different functions, upper functions that helps us to really deal with our data when we want to do manipulations. So the format for our function is select the data, there's the data frame or table, then the columns that we're looking, we want to subset. So let's go back now, we'll go to our code, more hands on than just the slides. So I'm going to be using the examples we've started with the Olympic data. So I'll just, I'm taking either of the data set that we've worked with. So I'm taking the Olympic underscore data to underscore long. So I want to select some specific um, variables or columns here. So I'm selecting the country, the ISO code, and um, the region and the position. So I would run that. So le let me just be much more visual. I will view in the tabular format. So we're not going to have all the columns re returned to us, but we're going to have specific columns that we want to work with. Maybe we want to just explore the values on the position and year column with respect to their country, that is doable. So that's where the select function comes in. So whichever one you want to use, you, you want to select, you can use the select function. So the, the first example here is using the variable names. You can also use index indices to represent each of the variables. So for the first column is going to be country, that is going to be one. ISO code to and so on and so forth. So you can bring the numbers as a range. That's one to three. So instead of saying one, two, three, so I'm taking these three together. So that is what I have here. Now I want to go for position and year. For this, they are at the they are the last column there. So that's where 12 to 13 comes in. So that's just the flexibility of using the, so we get the same result. So still the same thing. So, so either way you can explore your data and do some subsetting there. So also we can take out some of the columns if we're okay, I want to take out instead of subsetting or bringing it out, you use the minus sign before your variable name. So you can use the minus sign before the variable name. So it, it just the columns, the extra columns that we had for year underscore 20 and year underscore 2019, there we want to take it out. We don't want to see it there. So if I take this, so the minus is saying, okay. Okay, I think. I think I've run something here. I've taken it out. Let me see. Oh, okay. Actually, okay. We changed it back to, we took out the underscore. So if I'm not going to use that, then I'll have to use the back. So if you have space, in your variable name, you need to use the back the, or the um, the back tick, or you use the inverted comma. Yeah, so to say that. So this will work now. This should work. Yeah, this works because of the space in my variable name. I can't call it as a single um, text, so I need to use the inverted comma to bring it in. So that is it. You don't have it anymore here in my data set. So I've taken that out by preceding the variable name with minus, the, that's the minus sign. And where, where are we now? Okay. So I need to fill this, okay.
Okay, so the same thing. So is it that you use the dash sign or minus sign, or you use the exclamation mark to precede the variable name or a combination of variables? So whichever way you want to go, is it that you put your minus or the dash sign here, or use the exclamation mark? So to take out what you don't want. Okay, so that is that. So you might have come across, you don't use this. You can't use this. I think that's still a flaw, I don't know, but trying to use the exclamation mark within the select function for each of the, um, sorry. So it's part of testing your code before you run it. So, but you might come across something like this and you get into trouble. You just need to look at your data, I mean your scripts again. So this, okay. Okay, yeah, okay. I think this works, but I, I did something yesterday. I got into trouble. So I think this still works. So that's part of live coding and testing your code for. So you can still use this and you can use the minus sign or the dash for your code. So that went well. No, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. Actually, it didn't go well. So you guys, what I still have here is this. The columns are still there. So actually I've not used it, but I tried to look at different scenarios and now you can see that it's still there, it's not working. So maybe we can get somebody, a professional to help us out on that. So this is still wrong, not working. It's not working, so, so that, so it's better if you're going to combine, you use this or you use the dash sign, this will work but this actually didn't work for me. So this works, but the other, the exclamation mark did not work for individual variables. So we'll go into the community to get more answers to that. So also we want to look at the helper functions. Yes, we can select variables by their names or the, ind the indices, we can also use some helper function to make our code a little bit neater. So, and easier for us just to, to don't have too many codes that we're writing or making mistakes in the name or our range. So we can use this. Everything, the function, everything brings back all your variables. Excuse me. So this returns everything all variables in your data set, that's your table or your data frame. So then the last, the last column, just like you would want to say, I'm going to select the last column in my data frame. This helps you with that. So it returns back the last column there. Okay, so another way we can do this is select this. Control X. No, oh, okay, okay, this. And the last one. Okay, so let, let's, I'll fix that later. But for the last one, you should be, one should be, able to, let me just look at that. Um, should be working. So I'm still, I'm lost there. Oh yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, you saved me there. Okay, thank you.
Hinesh, yeah. Okay, yeah, you actually have there. So, so this is how you get the last column. I know you have to use the negative number. Uh, it's still now, no, 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 it's not working here. Um, I don't know. I still believe we, there's still something missing there. So, um, okay, let me try again. Uh oh, it's still it's not working. So maybe you help me out there. So, but the shortcut. Let's go back to the shortcut now. So the shortcut is still going to be last, um, last call. So that gives me back the last column. Okay. So I think we can do that. We can still solve that on <laughs> on our side there. Thank you, Yunesh. So um, for our upcoming R users, you can make mistakes, you can fail, just get yourself back up and move on. That will go to the community. We have so many R users group communities online, the R community is there. Questions like this, I do, I still do it. So I post online, then we'll get help, your stack overflow and so many resources are there for you to get on the go while you're working help. So the R Studio community is there as well for you to post in any question. Even the GitHub um, repository for each of the package, you can always push something there and it might help in the update of the package. Itself. So, so moving on now, we want to look at, okay, selecting the last column before, that's the last column before the 50, the five and, Sorry, I'm, I think I've made a mistake on this. So this is actually returning the last five columns. So let me run this. Um, okay. Okay. The explanation here is that we're going to take out, this is the data. The data that is returned is actually the column before, yeah, the column before the last five. Sorry. So we're trying to explore this. You can get it right, but what the statement there is telling us with the helper function last underscore call, under the underscore call is that I'm going to take out the last five, then the column returned back the column before the last five take that out and every other column, but return the column before the last five. And one, two, three, four, five, four, the wide, okay, yeah, this is the one. One, two, three, four, five. I take out situation up to year 2019. I'll take that out as well as every other column before the column preceding the last five. So this is where this comes in. So if you view that, you have only that column returned to you. So you can play around with learning as well, teaching as well. So you play around with that. So the same thing here, I'm going, to, it's, it's going to stop before the last five. The last five is going to be taken out now. So I will take this out and this is what it returned. You can see the media workers imprisoned was the column, the only column that was returned. But in this instance, we're saying that give us back all the columns before the column preceding the last five. I hope that statement is not complicated, but just play around with the script and you'll be able to get it much more better. So this is a statement that is, instead of writing maybe, okay, this is what I would have written here if I'm not using the upper function, control C. So um, for this now, we're taking out the last five. So we might want to look at minus C. Um, that, that, that will be, so I need to know the numbers now or the variable name. So media, okay, that will be situation to year 2019. So this is going to be situation situation to year 
2019. So um, I believe this should work. <laughs> I think it was cross. So we get back the same thing. So it's the same. As you work with your script, you get to understand more better. You get used to it. You don't have to get used to it in one day. So I will still make mistakes and I still, we still accept our mistakes and we stay by it. Then we'll correct it. We'll get help from people like Yanish. So thank you so much there. So this is equivalent to what we have here. So instead of using the helper function, I can still do this and take out the last five that I don't want to be included in the data set that I, I'm subsetting now. So our other helper functions are, you want to look at some names. If we look at this um, Olympic data one, so we have columns that have sim similar names. So we have summer underscore participation, summer underscore gold, and so on and so forth. So instead of calling all the names, I'll use this helper function, it makes it neat. So I want all columns that starts with SUM. I can use the entire summer or something, but I just want to kind of, my code should be smart and I think we're all smart. So it's going to kind of take it like, it's like a regular expression. So this is going to so return back any column that has SUM following each other S followed by U by M. Okay, so we have summer underscore participation, summer underscore gold, and so on and so forth. So you can decide to use the complete name summer. Either way, it's still going to work. Okay, so also you can, might want to combine kind of wild card. Okay, I want columns that start using the combination function. I want columns that starts with summer and winter, okay? So all the columns are going to be returned back to us, okay? So if there's any question, you are free to put it in the chat box, I'll take it up, okay? So another helper function that we can use is the ends with. So and this, and it's really so easy to understand, but you just need to explore the documentation about the packages and the functions that are within the packages. So also you can get all this information by using the question mark for those who are just starting, just put in the name of the function or the helper function, you will be able to get information in the help tab. So just click the one that is relevant to you, then you get more information on it. So this is more of going in. So if you want to look at the select function, so that will also give you, and you'll get to see all the helper functions there and the examples that you can use. Yeah, the recording is going to be shared as well as the code. It's going to be shared later. Thank you, Yusuf. Okay. So end with just like the function name states, a variable name that ends with total. So let's view this. So all the columns that are returned are ending with total. Okay. So the same thing starts with this. So you can also combine the helper function using the logical um, control. So the, and, the ampersand helps you to combine. So the both sides has to be true. So it's going to start with summer or winter and ends with total. So let's explore this. So it starts with this or ends with total. So, um, let me look at what I did there. So, okay, it's not ending because, yeah, that's why we have that re result. So it's not ending with this. So that's the exclamation mark there. So if I take out the exclamation mark, we'll have something different. So it's the both sides has to be true if there's no negation. But the exclamation mark stands for the negation of the statement on the right side of the ampersand. So 
Now it has to be either summer or winter and it must end with total. So that's what this is doing. So and, and means both of them has to be true. So, but if you want to negate one side, you use the exclamation mark, then you have to get another result. But you need to understand the statement that you're passing in. You need to understand your code. So um, we're still on, okay. So, so there are so many, um, sorry, I'm looking at the time now. So there are so many examples here that we can explore later. So but I want to move on to, because of the time, I, I want to give some time to questions. So the, the helper functions, there are so many, you can do those ones that, okay, your variable name contains in, that's I and followed, following each other or something. So if you look at this for the in, the country is not there, although the country, countries, I is there, N is there, but they are not following each other back to back. I needs to start and followed by N. So then this, variable names all pass that test. I is following N and N is following I, sorry. N is followed by I, I is followed by N, yeah. So I think you get that, okay. So, but it shouldn't be that, okay, I is further apart, maybe I followed by A, then we have N. No, it's not going to work for that. That's why countries did not fall into that, um, columns that are going to be returned. So then the same thing contains TR and so on. So you can also use regular expressions, just like we said. Okay, what's the difference between an end? Okay, the exclamation mark. Okay, let me go back to my code. Okay, the question states, what is the difference between use of exclamation mark end and end? Okay, let me go back there. End with means that your column names or variable names should end with this string. Okay? And that is going to be true. So if I now precede this, this function, this helper function, okay, with, I'm starting it is now a prefix with an exclamation mark. That means I want it to be false. I want the statement to be false. That means ends with is not going to end with total. So it's, it's more or less like, it's not going to end with total. So it can be any other column. So, and that's what we did here. Here ends with, is going to return all variable names that ends with total. So let me run this again. So you can see all the variable names, the columns that are returned, they all end with the string total, okay? So I can try to say T-A-L is still the end of that, um, the variable name. So, but if I said, uh, if, I, if I decide to put the exclamation mark here on line 65, that means I'm saying select all variable names that doesn't end with total. I'm negating it now. Instead of the output to be true for all the variable names, it's not going to be false. So all volume variable that are variables that are going to be returned, they're not going to end with total. So the ones ending with total are going to be exempted. They're not going to be returned. You can see total is starting, not ending. And it's not that it contains. It doesn't, it's not, I didn't use the state that helper function contains. So if I use contains now, that means the one that ends and the one that starts are going to be returned. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, thank you. Okay. So we're moving on. 
Okay, let me look at, I will explain that I'm not going to run the code so that we can go to other aspects of dplyr. So here is like a regular expression. So another one is the, the using the billboard um, data set that we used earlier. I want to select um, a numerical range of columns, okay? But they are actually starting with this, WK. Number. Does the number, sorry, another question. Does the number of exclamation mark put as a prefix matter? It has to be one. Okay, then you are going outside. If you're going for multiple, that means we're going into some advanced R programming language, which does not apply here. I hope that answer your question. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, let me run this. So what I'm saying here is that I, the column name, the variable name is actually starting with WK, but I want it from the, the ones with numbers ranging from 10 to 15. Okay, so, and that is what we have here, 10 to 15. So you can explore more, play around with this. Another equal function here is the where. So I'm trying to check the data type. So where the columns are actually numeric. If you're using this function, for those who are familiar with R, this is a function that should end with the brackets opened and closed. So if I type this outside the upper function, Okay, it's going to be followed. That's saying that it's a function. But in this instance, we are using it as a value to an argument. So the bracket should not follow, should not be included here. So if I include the, the bracket there as a function, trying to treat it as a function, it's going to give me an error. So, so we want to check, either you want to check for, um, you want to check for the is either is numeric or character or factor. Use it as a single um, value as an argument, not as a function in this instance. So if I do this, so it's going to return back all columns that are numeric, having data values that are numeric, numeric type. Yes, um, this, okay. <laughs> okay, the double exclamation mark is an advanced aspect. Well, I don't want to go into dealing with this now. So we're going to looking at for advanced R programming. So I don't want to go into this now. So we only, in this instance, we only need one exclamation mark. You only need one exclamation mark, uh, except if you have a use case where you've used double exclamation mark, then you can give me that. We are all learning. So, so, but double exclamation mark is an advanced programming aspect of R. So I don't want to go into that now. Okay. Okay, so another aspect, we, when you're looking at, okay, we've actually been dealing with variables, variables, variables. Now we're looking at the observations. If I want to take out ex, um, some certain in numerical number of your observation, maybe from one to two or something, you can use this. So this is more or less like, okay, you want to slice your, data set into certain number of rows. So if I use this, this okay, so if I'm using this, what I'm saying is that I want it to return back the last row, the last row in my data set, maybe a table or a data frame, okay? So it's more like I'm using the function till, so I'm using the function till here. I'm saying return the last one. That's the last row 
for all the columns. So that, that is that then, then I'm taking the last row. So returns all rows five to the last one. So um, I don't want to take much of the time. We're losing time here. So this is going to drop four rows. So, so okay. So I think I'm, I'm almost, I'm out of time now. So, but I'm going to go through all the codes. I'm not going back to my slides. So other things that you can do here, you can rename your columns, just like what we did before. If you're not okay with the column names, you can change it. In this instance, when you're using the function rename, you have to st start with the new name equal to the old name. So in this instance, the old name is countries with the small letter C, but the new name is going to be with the one with capital letter C. So if we look at what we have here, we have capital letter C now starting there. So then you can add multiple, you can change multiple names. You can also combine them together so all this you can explore. We need to finish up. Okay, so I'm going to be a little bit, but we're going to share the code and the videos. So another thing that you can do, you have a question? Okay, the question is, when using tidy R, um, that, that's pivot longer. If you have several column groups that you want to tidy, is there a possibility of having an overbloated data frame, especially with the large data set? Yeah, I I want to overbloat it. I don't know. Maybe you're talking about large, very large data sets. Is that it? Victor? Um, I, I want you to be more specific there, but I, an example could be. Sorry. Um, okay. Okay, let me see if I can get the question here. Okay. Okay, from the question that um, Victor asked. Okay, new, I mean, it is said that is large for memory. Uh, okay, if we're looking at, it depends. I wouldn't be able to answer that question of the effect on the memory. But for any large data set, there's an example here that I didn't want to run, but it's for those who can have access to it. You can also, if you're looking at large data sets, you might have different columns that has maybe like, um, we're trying to look at maybe position like the summer, the summer data, the Olympic data set that we're having, we might have some that, okay, summer gold, summer, different um, column names, but similar. So we are having different types of similar variables. In that instance, you can do something like this. I included it in the demo. You can do something similar to that. Um, um, oh. Okay, actually, okay, I'm going to include it in the demo, in the script that I'm going to share later. So you can take out, it's actually a big problem that was actually treated on Twitter. Uh, so I, I got into that problem and I was able to solve it by also researching online and I, I got the answer, it was so easy. So I'm going to, I will include it into, in the script that we're going to share. But the most important thing is that if you are working with large data sets, there's you need to consider your 
infrastructure, maybe your laptop, your system capacity and the functions that you're going to use. So if you are looking at maybe bringing in large data sets, you know the, the function that you use or the package that you're going to use is going to be different from what the package you're going to use for CSV files. So I, I believe that answers your question, but if you are looking at varying um, column names that you want to treat, there are different ways that you can handle them. There are different ways. So you can combine as many columns that you want in your function. So it depends. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'll go back to dplyr. So you can rename your columns as we've shown here. You can change them to uppercase, different lowercase and so on and so forth. You can decide to select some specific columns that you want to target. Your target variables that you want to change to uppercase and lowercase. So I, let me just run this and then we'll look. So I sell, I decided to take the one starting with summer and um, winter. So they are now all in uppercases while the other still remains lowercase. Okay. So we're looking at, um, our variables, but we're back to the variables. We want to look at creating new variables or taking out some, okay? So instead of subsetting, we're looking at our variables itself. We want to either take out or we change, we're changing the type or we're adding new ones or we're taking out the old ones or the ones that we don't need as uh, actually. So we can use the mutate function the mutate function comes handy in this instance. So this one helps you to create new columns based on the columns that you're having in your data set. Okay. So you can decide to, like we were having for Olympic underscore long. So we can use any of this, um, any of the columns here. You can use any one and manipulate the data. So the, for, especially for the numeric ones, you can do some arithmetic operations on them. The ones in character, we can decide to change them into factors, especially when you want to do your visualization or exploratory data analysis. So we can do that there. So here in this instance, we're creating a new one by and we're giving it total underscore medals. We want to add up all the, for the, the values in the gold, um, silver, and bronze column, we want to add them together. So and this is what I specify here, five to seven, columns five to seven. So if we look at this, we'll have a new column with the name total underscore medals that sums up the number of gold medals and so on and so forth here. Yeah. So that's what I did there. So, okay, so we can remove by assigning null to the column here within the muted function. So the same thing as what we did earlier. So if I did, if I equate participations equal to null, that means it's going to take out that column. Okay, cool, yeah, it's cool. But okay, but, yeah, thank you, Dinesh. So um, I love this, okay? Um, yeah, I get it. So by this kind of, kind of I, I'm going to keep that in my, in my code um, portfolio, I'll use that as well. But if we're looking at the, I'm going to put it here. So if we look at this, it's kind of, uh, yeah, it's going to work. So, but our newbies, um, I hope you can do what we're doing here is that, um, take this. Okay. So what we're doing is that we want to select, okay? The number, the function inside the 
function is actually saying so long. So it's, this is going to return the number of columns here. So if I take this, it's going to say seven. That's seven in there. So then it's saying that okay, we look at the maximum. Let's run this and say with this work. Yeah, okay, yeah. This actually works. It returns the last. What's that going to be the last column? Okay, Olympic one. Okay. Yeah, that's the last column. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, I I I at least it's a it's code. One thing is that you should remember one thing. No matter what your code states, you can solve the same problem using different codes, you can solve a single problem using different codes. So you can't say, okay, it's just a way, one way out. So I, I saw the question there by Victor. Everybody has their own way of writing their code. So, and I think it's just about solving the problem. If your code works, fine. If it runs fast, yeah. If it's too slow, then you have to do something about it. So it's just that, okay, Make sure your code is understanding to the next product, maybe your teammates, follow the structure or maybe the, the standard laid by organization. If it works fine, fine, it's good. So I hope that's all, that answers your question, Victor. So thanks for sharing, Jinesh. Thank you. So I'll comment this out, okay. So we're moving on. So. We're taking out a, a column using by equating to null within the muted function. So you can do it another way, just like what um, Janesh shared with us. I can still do what I did on line 136 a different way. I can do that a different way. So we can say to, okay, Olympic, be it along dollar uh, this okay participations so i can decide to say no okay so if we say this it's going to work and it's not going to be available anymore in our data set. I've taken that out completely. So because I have reassigned it back to it. So it's the same thing, the same thing you can do here as well. So that, that is going to take me back a long one. So, but like, we're moving on. So that's, so it's just to show that you can solve the same problem in different ways. The code here is okay. The two codes here are all okay. So thank you. So also we can use another helper function that's the across function within the muted function to help us change all variables where the values in them are actually characters. So in this instance, we're going to change them to categorical values. So that's where you can use factor. So, so you can do this. I don't know. If it's, okay. So if we look at it, the outputs, we still have some character here. So we have all of them, all character in, in variables that are having values that are of character type are now converted to categorical data. That's factors. So, so it's practice, practice, you get to get it. So another thing we can do, there's some arguments that you can just use to help arrange your, your, the, um, your variables in your data set. Okay, so we can use the dot before or dot after as an argument within your muted function. So this helps us to place the new variables that we're creating 
or manipulating, changing the structure or the type, the type now, you can bring them before the any column that you want, before the first one or the second one or the third one, whichever one you want, you can decide to do that. So if I run this, Mm. Sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yep. Sorry, the, the one one row is okay. I, I deleted the participation column. That's why this is not going to be the same thing again. So it's going to be one, two, three, then four. So it's not going to be fifth column anymore. So this is going to be four to six because I took out the participation column here on line 141. So that's why my the number of variables in my data set is no more seven, it's now six. So this should work now. Okay, that works. Okay, so that, that is logically by default, the new variable should come at the end of the, the last um, column, if I did not include the dots before there. So if I take it out, Control X. So I run this again. You can see they are placed at the end. It's placed at the end of all the other columns. So, but I can override this by adding the argument dot before. Another op option is using the after dot after, after a particular column. So whichever choice you want to make, but remember you can only use this argument in one single muted function and um, statement. You can't do this. So that's why I comment it out. If you run this, because I'm saying that, okay, total should come after the last column and then percentage gold medal should come before the first column. So this is not going to work. So that argument is just for one single mutate function. So that is not going to be okay then. So, so what you need to do is to make two statements. So that's what I did here. This is one muted statement. So I specifically say that. Then the second statement for this. So this is going to be okay. Um, okay, still the same problem. Four and then six. So this would work. So that is before this one, then after. So that, is, that solves the problem there. So the next function that we're going to look at is the filtering. We want to filter based on some certain correct, um, criteria. Okay. So what we're going to do is that we want to filter our data. We're working on the rows now. So we're looking at the data in our observations. So what I'm doing here is that I want to get the data, the observations where the season column has values and that's equal to winter. So if I do that now, so all values in the season column, they're all going to be winter, winter, winter. All values for winter Olympics. So, and I can also do some logical statements by saying that I want them seasons in winter and also gold, the number of gold should be greater than 20. So this is the all sign, the all control or operator, the all operator now. So this says either the season is winter or the gold, the number of gold is greater than 20. So if none of this, if ampersand and the all 
operator is there and you only separate your logical statements by a comma sign, it automatically by default says that you're asking me to make sure that these two logical uh, statements are true. So it's equivalent to what we have here. So if you do this, both these statements must be true. So and that is where all the returned observations, they are all going to be what? Greater, the number of goals are going to be greater. You can see 22, they're going to be greater than 20. So if you have questions, kindly pop it up into the chat and I will answer it in, as soon as I can. So trying to save time here. So also you can use some arithmetic um, functions within your statements and this would help you out. So um, that is that for filtering. So can, there are also some other functions that I don't want to go into now. So I want to go into so summary statistics now. You can combine, you can group your data, your data set or your data frame. Okay, I have another question. Oh, thank you, Victor. R is beautiful, yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> You're making me to blush now. I love her and I really love her. It's, it's easy, it's beautiful. So, <laughs> okay, yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. So I, I love her. So the summary statistics, you can get your mean, the average number of gold, silver, and so on. So I want us to finish by 12 because I have another meeting so i need to go so um so the same thing we have other functions like arrange you can arrange the values in your total in your variable in descending or ascending order so this is so awesome so what i i'm going to share the code and i think this takes me to the end of the session for this webinar. So I've been able to explore some of the functions within the dplyr and the tidyr package for data manipulation. And this takes a lot of a bulk of your work as a data analyst or a statistician, a data scientist, because your data need to be tidy. There's no real or beautiful output without the tidy, tidy data. You, it's just like the old saying, garbage in, garbage out. So you need to take into consideration most of these tidy um, the packages in the tidyverse. It's really, it's awesome. It makes work really easy for you. So at this point, I'm going to round up and give time for some questions, comments, we can still crush on R, we can still talk about R, and then I'll, I'll be able to answer the questions in the next five minutes before I hand over to um, Fidelis. So, um, okay. Okay, thank you, Victor. Thank you. Um, so thank you. Um, is it is it still there? Okay. Okay, Dinesh, thank you so much. My coding partner today. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Um, so do you have any question? Fidelis, are you on standby? So that you take. Yes, I am. Okay. I think that would be. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. So uh, thank I... you so very much. Okay. okay. Thank you so very much, uh, Madam Bilikisu, for that awesome uh, presentation. Uh, that was really, really insightful and uh, engaging. And also to our participants, for those that are joining us for the very first time, I hope you've learned one or two things and how to use R, how simple R is uh, for data manipulation. And uh, I can see 
Mr. Ludele Falani, thank you for joining us from Center for the Study of Economics of Africa. And uh, Mr. Uh, Obimu Iwa from University of Ilori, thank you so very much for joining us. Uh, they are joining us for the very first time, actually, and we oh, also you. hope to see you uh, in a subsequent uh, webinar. Uh, to our group members, Mr. Victor Odu, Jinesh, Mr. Uh, Ibrahim, thank you so very much for that uh, engaging uh, session. Uh, and we hope to see you in our subsequent uh, presentations. Thank you so very much. Madam. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I hope one can write more than two questions. Yeah, you can still share your questions via email or any of our social media and I think somebody will be there to really answer the questions. So we're going to share the code and everything. So thank you so much for keeping me company. And I really had a wonderful time. So thank you so much. So see you some other time. Bye. 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 Yeah, bye. Thanks. Mm -hmm.